The context window of GPT-4 just doubled from 4,000 tokens in ChatGPT to now 8,000 or even 32,000 tokens in the biggest version. So I want to talk about why I think this is a big deal and how this opens up for more things we can do. So I want to show you some ways we can take advantage of this improvement. So let's just get started. So the first thing I want to start with is uh, I see there's some kind of confusion sometimes about the context length or the context window. So I just wanted to quickly address this and show you a bit what I mean. So we can say that 1000 tokens is about 750 words. That's like ish plus minus. Uh, and you can see here the changes from ChatGPT. We went from 4000 tokens, that's the window, to 8000 tokens on one version of GPT-4 and we have a 32k version too. And as you can see here, that's about 3000 words in ChatGPT and 25,000 words. Uh, that's the biggest one, 32k, right? So how is actually the context window or context length working? So let's take a look at that. If we head over here, hopefully you can see this now. Let me zoom in a bit. So here you can see we have ChatGPT, we have 4000 tokens here, we have the same 32k version here. And we put in here, right, 4,000 tokens. And you can see here on the top here, I put my YouTube channel is all about AI. I do that on both places, right? And if I go down here now and I type in, in let's say, ChatGPT or GPT-4, uh, what is my YouTube channel name? Your YouTube channel name is all about AI. So the model now can look in this window. It still has access to every context here because it's under 4k or 4k tokens so it can still understand that my youtube channel is all about ai so what happens if we move on to let's say we add yeah you can see this it, right it's good you can see we add 6000 tokens here now so we have 6000 tokens here and we have the same here right but now you can see this part now ends up outside the token window right so my YouTube channel is all about AI. It's, uh, it, it ends out outside the to token window because ChatGPT only can handle 4,000 tokens, right? So when we go to and ask, what is my YouTube channel name? It's just gonna reply something like, I can't find any information about any YouTube channel, right? But if we have the 32K version, that's no problem. This is still way inside the context window. So here we get the correct answer, right? And that is basically what I want to show you, because I've seen there's been some confusion about this. Uh, but also, you got to remember that the, the input and the output is the window, right? So if you put in 10,000 tokens and you get 10,000 back as an answer, then the context window, then you have added 20,000 tokens, right? So I think this gave you some uh, information about how the context window work. So we're gonna take a closer look at some use cases now. So the first thing I want to do is just take my latest YouTube video and turn it into a blog post or an article, call it what you want, just by using the big context window we got in GPT-4. So I'm just gonna show you how I do this. So the first step was to just take my YouTube video and turn it into an MP3 file so we only have the audio. Then I went over to this very simple Python script I created here with OpenAI's Whisper. That is basically just a transcribe uh, API. Just put my file name here, .mp3. And when I run this, I will get every word I said in the video in text form, right? So basically, I'm just gonna run this now and let this finish. Okay, so that was done. Took about, I don't know, 45 seconds. You can see here now, we have a text file here with uh, every single word I said in the video. So that's perfect uh, so we can use in the GPT-4. Now let's move on to the second step. And that is just gonna be head over to my website and copy every single word for a similar article I have written before. So I get the format style, right? Just copy all of that and just paste it into a Word document. And then we can do our final step. And that is gonna be heading over to Mid Journey's homepage. I'm just gonna copy some information here about their newest model version 5 because I think we need some context for the article or blog post. Uh, and that is basically all I need. And now let's head over to GPT-4. So I didn't wanna waste your time, so I just went ahead and prepared this. So I just started with, here's some info I want you to read. Then I pasted in the whole previous old article I have written, so I get the format down, right? That was basically the whole article, and it just 
just answer me with red if you have red article, so we just get back that. This helps us save tokens, right? If GPT-4 is gonna give us a big answer back for everything we put in, then we're just gonna lose some tokens. This is a way to save some tokens. And here are some information about Mid Journey 5. I just put in some info here about Mid Journey 5. We get our red back. And here is some more information I want you to read. And this was basically, you remember my transcript. So here you can see, this is every word I said in the video. So I just fed that into GPT-4. You can see how long this is. And it still can read it, right? Then I go on to create my prompt. So here I just go. Now with all the information you have read, I want you to write an in-depth article named GPT-4 plus Mid Journey V5, the future of photo. In the style of a, I just go when tech writer, include details from the information I gave you above. Okay, so that's a good start, I think. And you can see here the title, future of photography, so we changed that a bit. We got some subtitles, we got a, I think it was an okay introduction. We got section one, that was GPT-4 and Mid Journey, a match, a match made in tech heaven. And it just talked a bit about GPT-4 and Mid Journey V5. And showcasing the power, and we got the impact of the photograph industry, and we ended up with our conclusion. And I read through this, and it was quite good actually. It only used uh, from our context window above. This is pretty much not using nothing from the foundation model. And I think I can say that basically this content that the AI wrote for me, or GPT-4 wrote for me, it's pretty much my own content since I generated the video, right? Uh, but I wasn't too happy about section 1, so I just continued. Great. Can you elaborate more on section 1? Include more about GPT-4 priming. So that's what I really wanted to go in the article, because I wanted to talk more about GPT-4 priming. And then it did a really good job. Uh, this this se section was very good. It went deep into priming GPT-4 for optimal prompt generation. Uh, I'm gonna leave a link to this so you can read it if you want to. And it was building contextual understanding, that's important. Crafting detailed prompts, iterative refinement. And this was a very good uh, section. So I read through all of this and basically I didn't have to change anything because it took everything from my transcription from the video and just built on that. And it turned out very good actually. So I was pretty happy with that. Then I just wanted, great, can you elaborate more on the conclusion? Write it in a pers for first person view. Because I think the conclusion was a bit thin up here. So I wanted a bit more. And it gave me a four, five paragraph conclusion. That was very in depth. And I think I took out one paragraph and I decided to keep the rest. Just did some small adjustment, but I basically kept the whole thing. That was basically it. I went to mid-journey, I created some images, I added my video. So let's take a look at how this turned out. So you can see here, yeah, I kept the intro. I kept the section from priming, building contextual understanding. I added some images, right? I added some examples that I had to do myself, of course, but that was quite easy. And we got this in-depth conclusion. How long did I spend on this? I will say I spent about 20-30 minutes to turn this up. And I gotta say it was a really good article and it covered everything I wanted. The big advantage of this is that you, when you can put in all, let me zoom this out a bit so you can see. When you can put in all this context here, you can never do this in ChatGPT. It will never remember the first things up in here in ChatGPT. It would just lose context, right? So that is why I think this is so powerful because you can put in so much information above what you want to do. So you can take advantage of the context window and use all that information to basically, you don't have to use anything from the foundation model, just some small things. And then you can say that the article is very much not, it's AI generated, but it's not, the content is not from the foundation model, right? So let's just run this for fun through the through the AI detection tool. So I'm here just at OpenAI's own text classifier and I pasted the whole article inside here. So let's just check it. The classifier considers the text to be very unlikely AI generated, right? 
So I think that's the best score you can get. Yeah, very unlikely. I know it was written by AI, but all of that context that I added basically used nothing from the foundation model. That is, I think, is a great use case for this. I wanted to show you one more because I want to, don't want to drag the video on so long, but I might be doing some more on my membership if you are interested. So let's just take a look at one more use case I want to show you. So I just wanted to take all the text from the research or the compressed research paper from GPT-4. So I copied all of this text here, even the exams and everything, every single bit of text here. And I went over to GPT-4 and I just went here are some info for you to read. So I pasted in all of this text. But as you can see, I want to show you a trick here. So I didn't paste in everything at once. I split it in two. That's not a token issue, that's more of a window issue in ChatGPT. Uh, you can paste in all the tokens, but the window needs some kind of space. So I just split the text in two and paste it in in two different uh, sequences. And I just, just answer with read, and I got read, and I pasted the second half, right? So now we have every single word on the GPT-T compressed technical report, right? Now I want you to create a, a quiz test with 15 questions about the content above. The test should be for students in machine learning. So I expect GPT-4 now to create some difficult questions, right? So let's just uh, run this. So let's just take a quick look at some of the questions. So remember this was for students in machine learning. What are some of the biases and limitations that GPT-4 may have in its outputs? How has OpenAI worked to improve the safety and alignment of GPT-4 compared to previous models? Explain the two main parts of GPT-4's training process, pre-training and reinforcement learning with human feedback. Okay, so this seems a bit more advanced. So let's see what happens if we change this. So we don't need 15 questions. Let's go five and let's do it for four graders. Let's see what we get then. Okay, this was just great. This was so wholesome. So let's have a look here. So it goes, creating a quiz test suitable for fourth grader based on the con content provided might be challenging as the information is quite advanced. However, I'll do my best to simplify the questions while keeping them relevant to the text. So what is the name of the AI language model we are talking about? GPT-2, 3, 4, 5. So that's good. What does GPT-4 do? Help people cook, drive cars, play video games, answer questions and give information. Is GPT perfect? Uh, yes, it never makes mistakes. No, it can make some errors. No, it only knows about sports. <laughs> so that was a good one. Uh, what is one thing that GPT-4 should not help with? Making friends, doing homework, creating weapons, learning new words. Uh, should it could it help you make friends that was a bit strange but i think c is the correct answers this was very wholesome uh, but i think this kind of showed how we can take this large content window and turn it into something cool but this is just of course scratching the surface right this is just the tip of the iceberg so i'm gonna be exploring um more of this later uh, i haven't really gotten around to i have a good idea but i'm not gonna spoil that yet so i think that's it for this one so i hope this video gave you some inspiration of how you can take advantage of the new context window length so if you want to dive deeper into this check out the link in the description to my membership where i will be doing some videos on this coming up and check out this video here if you enjoyed this one and as always have a great day and i'll see you in the next one